listening to a download from the outdoorstation.co.uk. Number two seven six. What time is it now? It's uh, ten o'clock. So, um, good night, everybody. Good night, uh, Andy. Good night, Bob. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> They run and hide their heads They might as well be dead When the rain comes When the rain comes When the sun shines They slip into the shade And sip their lemonade When the sun shines When the sun shines tonight um, I don't think I could have chosen a, a better evening to, to test out a new piece of kit a new shelter uh, it was very very windy winds coming right in off the sea and uh, very very wet and I'm still here the top tent thing looks in one piece and, uh, and I'm dry. I think we need to play around with uh, different pitching techniques, I think, though. I tried pitching this, because um, it was very stormy, I tried pitching it straight into the ground at one point rather than using guys, and um, I'm not sure that was particularly successful. Uh, a lot of flapping about and a lot of noise however the main thing is that um, as I said it would dry and in one piece um, with a bit of luck that's the worst of the weather out and done with for at least a day and we can look forward to a, a reasonably decent rest of the day but uh, that was uh, one hell of an evening well, it's now uh, almost seven o'clock, and um, between us, I think we've been up for about the last hour and a half, uh, drying things out, spreading things out over the uh, the bushes to to dry sleeping bags and odd damp things, and uh, 
having a cappuccino and a little bit of porridge, I believe you had this morning, Andy? Yeah, left over from Scotland. <laughs> oh dear, you know how to live. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, it's, it's um, absolutely gorgeous there, sun shining over the sea, uh, lovely dappled effect in the clouds. Who'd have thought that only a few hours ago we were just being battered to bits? Yeah, it was a, f a lot of water everywhere. Yeah, yeah, very uh, still soggy underfoot, obviously. As you say, I mean, you can see that the the clouds are now heading inland, and uh, the Midlands are going to get it probably in a few hours' time, I should imagine. Probably got it now, even. <laughs> Bless them. <laughs> but anyway, you can see it. You can probably hear in the distance. Um, it sounds like there's a, the farmyards coming to life with barking dogs and. Tractors. The sea looks very inviting. If it was slightly warmer, yeah. after you, Claude. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I think we'll uh, be glad to get going and get warmed up. Actually, once these things have dried out. Um, yeah, if it stays like this, we're going to have an absolute fabulous day's walking. This is a fantastic stretch. Very rugged coast. Um, we might see some seals, um, other little bits and pieces. So we could be for a good day's walking. Excellent. Well, we'll have to gather some proper wood uh, as we go this time as well, because uh, that other stuff I picked up last night was uh, a bit of a disappointment. Yes. And we've still got croissants to toast yes, and yes. have yeah. nice and crusty. We like to think of ourselves as the kings of the wood-burning <laughs> stove, don't we? <laughs> Not last night. Have you, that reminds me, you bought your fishing rod. Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't bring my fishing rod. That's I good. Was... I won't starve then. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just drying off a little bit of my sleeping bag. And, uh... So how did the uh, how did the tent perform last night? Not bad. Um, it needed to be guyed out a bit more last night in the wind, and um, but you know you live and learn by these things. That was the first time you pitched it really, yeah, and certainly you yeah. had a good test last but, night. Uh, um, oh yeah, yeah. I mean it's obviously b pretty bomb proof, as they say. Um, the only thing is, it does sound as if you're sleeping inside a Sainsbury's carrier bag. Yeah, I did wonder if there were several <laughs> tons of crisp packets floating around last night. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it's amazing, isn't it? You know, it's probably because we were up and drinking our red wine last night, but um, just a few little tweaks of guy lines and stuff, and everything looks a lot more rigid. Well, I look forward to uh, seeing it tonight, Navy Day. One night's experience under your belt. The the Shangri La worked okay. I mean, it's um, they've seam sealed now the Shangri Las, so they, uh, it should be waterproof, and all the features on it are uh, are pretty good. Um, but there does seem to be a slight ingress of water coming through on some of the I presume there uh, some of the nest attachment points where it's worked its way through somehow. But there was an awful lot of water last night. Yeah, I mean that was. Uh... That was as good as it gets in terms of Mediterranean type storms, wasn't it? Yeah. There was an awful lot of water. In fact, you know, you just get up and walk around the side of your tent and uh, you can just see where it's all ran off onto the grass. It's exceptionally boggy. Yes, and uh, the sleeping quilt worked well. Good, yeah, I was wondering about that. I was... I'm, I'm never really sure about those as an invention. Well, I was, um, you know, the, the, the jury was out, but I wanted to, to use it for a few nights just to uh, be able to speak with some sort of experience and authority on it. And um, it's certainly very warm, very comfortable, no, no question about that. Um, and the only sort of manoeuvrability part of it that I, I felt uh, was unusual for me was I like to put the, the sleeping mat under my, f as the um, sit mat under yeah. my feet area. Yeah, yeah. And when that slipped from where it was... I couldn't actually wriggle sideways with my feet to just sort of hook it oh, back right. under. I was actually sort of trapped in one position because the whole thing was held down by the sleeping mat, which, of course, I was then lying on. The only thing that um, I've always wondered about quilts is, do you get a draft? No. No, no, no. I was, that was my, um, my main... I mean, last night was a good test, to be fair. The wind yeah, was whipping was, through was. there. Yeah, yeah. There, were the, uh, there was no danger of condensation <laughs> inside your tent, was there? No, there was no, and and, uh, and that was a concern. No draft, but it 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 is. It is I mean, because of the nature and the amount of water there is, it's the the bag itself is damp where it wraps around the um, mat slightly and touches the ground yeah, from the water that's been yeah, spraying around this morning. Yeah, so that's why it's drying out. Yeah. But uh, and I didn't really miss the, the the hood either. But I mean, having said that, obviously we're all sort of. Um, oh, I like my hood. Ooh, so, I'm sorry. I was able to bury myself in it last night. The only, thing, the only thing I did, I got an invasion of the big black slugs last night. Yeah. The, the um, most unpleasant one was the one that crawled off the sleeping bag onto the side of my cheek in the middle of the I, night. I uh, was expecting to wake up this morning to lots of black slugs after hearing you going on about it, but there were no black slugs under my oh. top. Well, Perhaps it's because it's see-through. Yes. 
Perhaps it's invisible perhaps to them. Perhaps they just want a bit more privacy, yeah. <laughs> Actually, it's not really see-through, if anybody's worried about this. It's translucent. Hmm. You know somebody's in there, but you can't quite make them out. But it makes for fascinating entertainment watching. <laughs> Especially when you put your head torch on. <laughs> well, yeah, anyway. Right, come on then, let's uh, dry out and get pack up okay, the space. yep. The home of UK-based audio and video podcasts for lovers of the great outdoors everywhere. It's all about getting out and having much more fun. Nine thirty, and we've made our way to um, well, the first of the bays that we can actually get down to. Uh, very stony shore, um, about a hundred yards wide, and there are three seals honking at us, telling us to get off my land. Yeah, I got a feeling it's uh, near near little seal time, but um, yeah, they're just sitting there, aren't they? Floating out there, three of them just watching us. Every now and then, they give a big honk. But we've got some um, other things to do before we move on. Yeah, we've got the, the honey stove uh, going. Managed to scrape together a couple of handfuls of uh, fairly damp twigs, but we've got them uh, together and we've actually working quite well because it's just doing a, a nice gentle glow, which is toasting our morning croissants. Now, you see, we promised them morning croissants yesterday. I bet they were all sitting there listening to that, not believing us, but there you go. Yeah. Is there anything better? Actually... To be fair, Bob, they're not just toasted croissants, they're wood-smoked toasted <laughs> croissants. Which is a first for me, anyway. It's nice though, aren't they? Yeah, they're very nice. And um, the weather here is now just absolutely wonderful. In The, the sky's blue with uh, some lovely wispy cloud in it. Um, and uh, if the day continues like this, and there doesn't seem to be any sign of it changing, it's going to be a lovely day. No, I think uh, I should do what you're doing, actually, and just get a few items out and just string them on the uh, on the rocks there and dry them out while I'm just waiting for the croissants to uh, to do nicely. Yeah, all well, my sleeping bag's drying very nicely there on those rocks. And, uh, yeah, I mean, this is the nice thing about this area, these little idyllic coves. We've not seen a soul all morning. Uh, half past nine, Saturday morning, Pembrokeshire Coastal Path. Uh, I guess when we get going again, we will, but it's... Uh, Rather lovely. It is a pleasure. It is a pleasure. Podcasting Podcasting world. World. Award-winning producers of podcasts to inform, inspire, entertain, and encourage people to enjoy a healthy outdoors lifestyle. Well, it's midday now, and Andy and I have uh, proceeded along the coastal path. It's actually, we were just saying, probably harder going than it is uh, walking in Scotland, because you can't quite get into your stride. It's got to have one eye continually on the, your footing, because it's, it can be very, very slippy in places, certainly after the weather last night. Uh, but the weather's held for us. It's a uh, beautiful blue, uh, blue sky, sunny day. Everybody that comes past us said... Uh, <laughs> Well, the forecast wasn't very good for last night. Yeah, no, we realise that. Um, we just passed the youth hostel now, on the way to the next bay. And uh, just wanted to share the, the moment with you, really. Just uh, nothing particular to add. Very pleasant walking and just so pleased that Andy's dragged me away from the computer to do this. Uh, sometimes forget that's the simple things like this. That's the whole reason we do it. And... Uh, the benefits that you get from just plodding along, taking in your surroundings. But we're very fortunate, it's a beautiful day. Wouldn't you agree, Dandy? Yeah, it's absolutely stunning. I mean, we're just stop and look back, we can see the, the uh, quite dramatic coves, beautiful aquamarine blue, beautiful skies, you know, that kind of, the, uh, the gorse is out. The heather's out. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, everywhere is blue, yellow, green, grey of the rocks. Well, we've only seen, what, th two, three families, if that? Yeah, it's very quiet, isn't it? It's, um, I mean, the youth hostel were just telling us they're full, but uh, I guess you walk 
a day or so further on and you get to St David's and then it's busy there but um, yeah you wouldn't think this was the height of the season really no. on one of our most popular coastal paths but there you go it's very very splendid anyway Well, I've achieved my goal of uh, using the honey stove to, to cook lunch and uh, we have uh, just made it down to one of the very few beaches we've managed to get to actually in, uh, in the trip so far. A um, few families in the distance but um, only a handful of people have made it here but it's a stony beach as you can hear and uh, found some twigs dotted around the shore, uh, got the, the honey stove going and we've just enjoyed a lunch of sweet corn, roasted sweet corn. How was that Andy? It was very nice, Bob. Um, it's a bit of a backpacking luxury, really. <laughs> you know, it beats that uh, dehydrated stuff, whatever it is we've been eating. Yeah, so I think it's, uh, it suits the day as well. It's very uh, sort of barbecue-y kind of day. I mean, it's Saturday. The sun is very, very warm, actually, at the moment. And um, we are enjoying relaxing against a rock, wondering whether we should move or let the tide overtake us, because the tide is coming in rapidly behind us. I think we're just about at the high tide point. I think it's just on the turn now, so we might not have to move at all. What if I'd known, I would have brought my fishing rod. Yeah, there we go, there we go, there we go. It would have been um, cooked sea trout on the honey stove. That's more like it, yeah, some mackerel or sea bass. Anyway, we're going to chill out for a bit now and um, see, where, uh, see where the path takes us this afternoon. We're not in any hurry, and I think we've both managed to relax. So we're going to make the most, uh, most of the, uh, the rest of the day. The home of UK-based audio and video podcasts for outdoors people everywhere. You're listening to the outdoorsstation.co.uk. A million listeners worldwide can't be wrong. Well, our epic journey has finally winding down and um, we've decided that, that after a very stimulating testing and stormy night and a equally, ch well, challenging underfoot but um, a very enjoyable day with the weather. It's been gloriously hot today, sunburn all round. We should um, allow ourselves a little bit of a treat and, of course, we've headed to the pub. And um, I've just enjoyed a wonderful meal. How about yourself, Andy? Yeah, it was a wonderful meal, and I kind of think we earned it, really. I mean, we all know this about coastal path walking. It's not easy, particularly when it's a coastal path like this, because you're up and down, up and down. You actually do quite a lot of ascent and descent. But also, you can't get into your rhythm, can you? So it was very slippy underfoot today, so lots of concentration, quite slow going at times. And we did big distances as well today, so, yeah, I think... Uh, yeah, good day, well earned. Yeah, well, we, we, as you said a few times, we deserve a treat. I mean, it's been, it's not the TGO challenge, it's not a, a challenge of any kind. It was a case of, let's get away for a couple of days and go and do something, where should we go? And up to the moment we got in the car, we hadn't decided. <laughs> so congratulations for coming up with something that resulted, ending in uh, actually a very, very pleasant pub. Yeah, it's been a good, it's been a good day today. This part of the world, when the, when the weather is good, is as good as anything else. And you have this wonderful, wonderful, craggy coastline with the kind of west light. You know, we're not on the coast now, but if we were to nip into the coast, you know, in a couple of hours' time, we'd probably get an amazing sunset tonight. It really is fantastic. <laughs> the problem is, of course, you know, you're just as likely to have storms and rain as we had last night. But we've been very lucky and, you know, just wonder whether, is this the summer? Anyway, it's been fantastic today today. One thing I have noticed, though, is, um, and, and speaking to a few people we have chatted to as we passed and stuff, how quiet it is. I mean, this is peak summer and the school holidays. And we've seen, what, two, three families on that beach? It wasn't many, was there? It is quiet. This is not part of the world that I've been to quite a bit in August. And it's often very busy. Very difficult to get into campsites. I mean, we're, we've gone a bit soft tonight after last night and we've uh, found a com campsite in uh, Treffin, a lovely little village. Quite a nice little campsite, really. 
uh, despite its eccentricities. <laughs> but um, you know, it's 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 very very quiet everywhere, isn't it? It's um, well, I mean, even the uh, yeah. the B and Bs and the um, yeah. houses we've been passing—they've all got vacancy sign up. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I wonder whether this thing about people staying at home this year really means actually they're staying in home. Mm. You know, they're not going out anywhere because I've certainly, I mean, to spend as long as we did today walking the coastal path, seeing what, four walkers or something like that was, mm. you know, very unusual. Mm. Well, as usual, we like to um, finish off with a couple of beers and perhaps talk a few, couple of minutes about gear. Um, because everybody likes talking about gear. Yeah, oh, we all like talking about gear. And um, the quilt's been the, the quilt has been an interesting experience. I think I'll definitely be using the quilt. And what I've done tonight is I've unclipped it so that it doesn't go underneath the sleeping mat. It actually just lies across me as a as a loose quilt with a, a foot section and I'll be using a sleeping liner with it as well. So I think that'll that'll be more comfortable, more flexible for me. I've got to say that I still really don't understand the quilt concept. I mean I know it's very big in the States and they're they're very big at it. I can see the point of carrying less weight if you've only got half the down. Um, but a lot of this stuff doesn't seem to be that light and not least because it uses some of it uses artificial um, uh, insulation material, which is heavier anyway. So well, I'm pleased to see how it's gone, really, because I still can't understand what the advantage is over a sleeping bag. Um, well, I mean, I've, I've found it, uh, it's worked. Uh, basically, the new Golight materials that are coming out are all recycled. They're all eco-friendly. They're all new recycled nylons. Uh, everything's got a pedigree and so on, which is very, very good and, and to be celebrated. However, the, the downside of that is that because of the recycled fabrics, it would appear that some of the fabrics are actually denser than um, uh, normal off-the-shelf fabric, should we say. Um, so you can feel comfortable that you're more eco-friendly, but you're not actually saving a vast amount of weight. And so this bag is about 600 grams. And it's not so much the weight, which is, is a reasonable saving. I mean, my, my normal bag's about 800 grams and so on, so it's, it's noticeable. However, it's the bulk, yeah. because the material doesn't crunch down as much. But as I say, I think Golight should be celebrated with their, their 2010 plans. Um, and um, I haven't found it uh, awkward using using a sleeping bag, but I hear what you're saying about that. No, I think they should be celebrated. Uh, I mean, most of the kit we buy is artificial, uh, based on petrochemicals somewhere along the line, I guess. And I know some people have now, you know, busily producing um, recycled fleeces and things like that. But it's good they're doing that. Yeah, we should be seeing more and more manufacturers taking that kind of lead, I think. And your um, your shelter now is looking much more attractive uh, tonight on the campsite than it did last night when it was thrown up in a fit of peak. Yes, it probably wasn't the best time to put <laughs> it up <laughs> here. Well, in, in seriousness, the first time. No, we've had a good play with it today. Um, and uh, people want to look at mountain lull designs. They put that into Google and look at the duo mid. They'll see what it's like. It's a little bit like... Um, uh, uh, go light hex except it's uh, a pyramid four sides and actually the floor pan f floor plan is about is rectangular so it's, it is a little bit different but um, yeah it's taken a bit of a while to get to do but, we, but it's such a nice afternoon here we've had plenty of time to play around with it and it would seem that the height of the poles is, is the critical thing to get in absolutely the balance right but also not not pegging to the ground you know, I mean, last night I pegged it right into the ground because of the wind. Um, but in many ways it's it's more similar to a tarp, and I think as long as it's taut and it's pegged in well, you should be fine. But uh, it's an interesting tarp, and then one or two people have bought them now in the UK. It'd be interesting to see whether um, they get more and more popular. Mm. Yeah, well, I think the I think the concept's good, um, but certainly last night and tonight, the ventilation it's the same as the as the Shangri La three, yeah. the, the the new version of the Hex. It's it, you need to have that airflow. You have got to have that air gap. Yeah, yeah. And I've been, I mean, it, in, in all fairness, I've been pleased with the Shangri La the three. Um, this lighter fabric this year, a few modifications which I've already mentioned, um, and it's still you know for for the pack acres of space. Yeah, we were saying last night, were we? It's a huge tent, really, the Shangri La yeah, three, yeah. and. Uh, you know, it's something people people should look at that as a, as a serious option. 
I think the interesting thing for me about my new shelter is it's made out of Cuban fibre. And I think we mentioned when we were chatting during the storm that uh, it's a difficult material to work. Um, and I know one or two people have had slight disasters with it because um, although it's very strong, it can be punctured easy and stitching is particularly a problem. But uh, just looking at this and seeing it last night when it wasn't properly taught and we were in a hell of a gale, it took a battering last night and you can just see the workmanship on it is absolutely superb. Mm. And it, maybe that's one of the reasons why we don't see Cuban fibre being used in the UK. Maybe really this is something that is such a niche well, you, thing. You, that, you, uh, you're back to cottage industries again and you know Americans support cottage industries and the UK can't. I mean, it's the sad truth of it. There, is, there aren't enough people, although people listening to this will be enthusiasts, there aren't enough of them to support that sort of industry. Um, but we've eaten well, and it's been interesting food, and it's all been f cooked over a real fire. Come on, that's been unusual, hasn't it? Well, yes, I think you should be congratulated um, for lighting real fires with wood that's this wet. Uh, we sat on a lovely beach at lunchtime, mm -hmm. didn't we? Getting the honey stove going. We had it going last night. Uh, we've got a few people in our field this evening who are a bit fascinated with all these light raids tent so uh, I think we're both determined to have two wood burning stoves going in the morning <laughs> <laughs> just to show them how extreme life can be but yeah I think wood burning stoves you know if you I mean this is a holiday isn't it you have to keep remembering it's a holiday um, the camping experience I know for you it is for me is a big part of the mm. whole thing and finishing early enough to set camp properly get out a wood burning stove uh, it, there's no doubt about it. It's got something magical about it mm. that you know, even the good meth stoves or whatever just don't have. They've lovely things to play around with. Mm. And of course, you know, where else or how else would you be eating smoked croissants in the morning? <laughs> I don't, don't forget the, don't forget the sweet corn. Anyway, um, Andy, thank you very much indeed. I think we need to go in for another beer now. It's been a, uh, it's been mm. a good day. And, getting a bit uh, chilly now. It's getting a bit chilly, and we're obviously getting soft in our old age. Now we've booked into a campsite, so let's get a few more beers in and thicken up that beer blanket. Think about where we're going next. If you have any feedback, questions or suggestions, why not drop us a line either on Facebook or directly to our email address, info at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. The home of UK-based audio and video podcasts for outdoors people everywhere. Thank you for listening to this podcast. To hear more from our extensive free library, please visit the website at theoutdoorstation.co.uk. You can now follow The Outdoor Station on Facebook, where we chat about each program we produce, answer questions, and discuss future productions. Why not join us there? This podcast is produced and hosted by theoutdoorstation.co.uk.